I talk about how form is much more important than formula quite a lot. And if you've never heard me say that before, essentially the idea is that formula stagnates your work and keeps you from progressing. Pipelines are very important, don't get me wrong, but having a set in stone way of doing things can be detrimental to your progress. Whereas paying more attention to the actual form that you're trying to create will help you train your eye and get you to a place where you really understand your tool set and how you can use it to create literally anything. Essentially, be like water. This is what it is, okay? I said empty your mind. Be formless, shapeless, like water. Now you put water into a cup, it becomes the cup. You put water into a bottle, it becomes the bottle. You put it in a teapot, it becomes the teapot. Now water can flow or it can crash. Be water, my friend. Bruce Lee is talking about fighting styles and how he eventually came to the conclusion that the best fighting style was to be adaptive and not rely on a specific set of moves or a style to lock yourself into. Well, the same thing is true here for sculpting, and specifically, I want to talk about how that pertains to a couple different tools. One of the most common questions I receive is how do I know when to switch between Dynamesh and Z Remesher? And the truth is that there is no specific point at which you will switch from one to another. Instead, you should flow back and forth between them, much like water, depending on when you need each tool. And to do that, you really need to understand what these tools are good for. Here are a few of the main benefits of each. Dynamesh is really good at manipulating geometry without having to worry about your topology. So we can stretch and pull our geometry any which way really far and start to really stretch this. Or we could even use something like a pinch brush and start to pinch our geometry in really tight through here. And we're also getting some stretching. And all we have to do is run Dynamesh again. And that will evenly distribute those polygons without any trouble. Dynamesh is also really good at doing quick booleans. If I were to insert multiple pieces of geometry, let's just add a quick little sphere and slide that into our mesh. We can just run Dynamesh again, and that will Boolean those two objects together. We can also use that for negative Booleans as well. If I hold the Alt key while inserting a piece of geometry, much like that, we can just slide that out a little, and I can re-Dynamesh that, and you'll see how it will subtract that from there. There are definitely other ways to go about this, but that is one of the faster ways to do it with Dynamesh. Dynamesh is also great for blocking out shapes. If we set the resolution extremely low, it kind of acts as insurance for us because it forces us to focus on kind of the larger shapes, most simple shapes that we need to create without getting too caught up in details. So I can just continue to re-Dynamesh this and I'll even break symmetry and maybe just try to make this a little bit more visually interesting so that we don't have just a stretch sphere here. And just by doing a couple pinches and pulls and manipulating the shape even further, we have something that could maybe uh, be a thigh or you know an upper portion of a leg. We can maybe continue sculpting on this. But again, the overall benefit here with Dynamesh and especially using this low resolution is that it acts kind of like insurance in the fact that now we, we don't have to worry too much about getting caught up in you know, adding super high resolution details, textures, secondary forms, all of that stuff. We can just focus on what's important, our primary shape. There's a lot more that Dynamesh is good at, of course, for specific instances of use, but those are the key points that define the tool. Now let's look at a few of the main benefits of using Zremesher. Much like Dynamesh, Zremesher is fantastic at redistributing polygons. So if we stretch this really far, and we could even Dynamesh this geometry just so we get rid of any preconceived topology that we had there, and run a 1K Ziri mesh, we can go ahead and get some more evenly distributed polygons, uh, but you'll see that this will actually be much more clean. So we have some nice edge loops running all the way through here, and with some of the more recent updates to Ziri Mesher, it works even better on hard surface tools as well. So this is much more clean than what we would get from Dynamesh, but we also have that added benefit of these being pretty evenly distributed polygons all the way through this shape. Much like Dynamesh, Z Remesher is awesome at redistributing even polygons. 
but it'll give us something much more clean. And then in combination with things like Keep Groups and the Z-Remesher Guides brush, it can be used to give us really clean topology. Nothing animation ready, of course, because that requires hyper-specific handcrafted geometry, but we can get pretty dang close here. Z-Remesher is also good at simplifying form by remeshing to a low poly count, so we can simplify shapes and focus more so on primary form that will be much more clean than something we would get from Dynamesh. If you're using Dynamesh, it's almost impossible to make large-scale changes to something without screwing up the secondary form you've built on top of it. But with Z-Remesher, we can get a low poly base, project subdivision levels, and have a low res version that we can manipulate and still retain our secondary forms or higher res details. Whereas if I did something like this with Dynamesh, and I'll just very quickly Dynamesh my geometry, and tried to use a large move brush in an attempt to move some of these shapes out, you can see that because of the fall off of my brush and the resolution of my geometry, we're going to continue getting some artifacts on our surface. And it really just isn't beneficial to us at such a high resolution of geometry to use a tool like Dynamesh for such large scale changes. At the end of the day, it really just comes down to actually using the tools. I can sit here and talk about it for hours, but that's not going to give you the hands-on experience that you need to really get a feel for the tool set. You need to get in and try sculpting something with Dynamesh and Z-Remesher, grab a reference, focus on your fundamental form, take it slow, don't rush ahead, and with time, you will learn the ins and outs of these tools and when to swap between the two of them. The important takeaway is that you don't have a set point in your timeline of sculpting a character, or really anything, where you say, okay, now it's time to start using X, whatever that is. Be fluid with how you change between the two, picking and choosing based on which tool is better at tackling what you need at that time. I, of course, have hundreds of free videos here, much like this one, full of training and tips for sculpting, but if you are looking for something more structured, I would encourage you to check out my Gum Road where I have courses and tutorials for absolute beginners, as well as more intermediate and advanced courses for people looking to learn the pipeline and level up their skills. In particular, I plan on running another term of my Mastering Appeal course in the future here soon, so if you want to hear more about that, make sure to click the subscribe button so you don't miss any updates in the future. There's a link in the description to my Gumroad where you can find more info on all of my courses, as well as my brushes, custom UI, some base meshes, and everything else that I use for my professional work. Check it out, and you guys have a fantastic rest of your day. Hope the video was helpful, and I'll see you in the next one.